Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Uh, welcome uh, to another weekend edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing great. Uh, first and foremost, um, I want to thank um, I want to thank all the good dads out there. Usually, don't you know? It's something weird to say, but uh, instead of wishing a, a very happy and healthy Father's Day to you know all the great dads out there I, I want to actually thank them you know it, it, it's it doesn't take a lot to create a child it really doesn't right 30 seconds of glory baby right but it, it does take a real man uh, to raise one and I, I want to thank uh, all the dads out there that are you know just not there in title you know they're there to mold our next generation everybody keeps talking about the importance of the family structure and the importance of uh, raising your children to be leaders and to be just good people. And so I want to thank all the great dads out there. And I really um, am fortunate enough to uh, be in a position that I am there for my, for my kids. I'm there uh, on a daily basis. I, I see them growing. I see them, um, you know, turning into little young adults. And yesterday was uh, a perfect example of why you live now for your children. You don't live uh, for yourself anymore. So yesterday uh, was my daughter's 11th birthday, right? Her, she turned 11 years old, which is amazing. Um, but she turned 11 years old yesterday and she turns to me and says, well, basically joking around, you know, Father's Day weekend is hijacked. It's gone. It's basically, we already know it's her birthday. So she turns to me and says, well, daddy, I want to go to the beach. And I said, well, it's the weekend. It's going to be very, very crowded. Plus, you know, the Corona thing, all that stuff. Please, daddy, I want to go to the shore. I want to go to the shore. So I had two choices. I could either go to Brooklyn, right? Drive to Brooklyn, uh, to the Coney Island, Brighton Beach area. But again, the parking there is, for all you guys who, who, who know that area, it's impossible. The parking is, is nuts. Or I had a shot to go to the Jersey Shore. There's a lot of point entrances to the Jersey Shore. And there's a reason why I'm, I'm saying this right now. Um, so I knew I was going to hit crazy traffic. So I said, you know what? Let's go to Sandy Hook. Okay. So I'm in the car literally two, two and a half hours. The, the absolute worst traffic. Um, I get there. Uh, how in God's name that I actually find the spot. I actually found the spot instead of throwing it into a lot. But I found the spot. And as soon as I got out of the car, or actually the truck, but as soon as I got out of the truck, there was thousands and thousands of people. And the reason why I bring that up, if you start looking at what the market did for the last two weeks or so, we always knew a second wave was going to come, right? The cold Corona thing. For me, I've been pretty much home for the last five months. If you see what's going on, every video you see me wearing a hat and there's a reason why I haven't gotten a haircut now in so long. Again, I've been trimming my sides there and there, but again, it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world, right? But slowly but surely, we started seeing cases pop up now aggressively in the last two weeks. You can make it, you know, you can make the case of people were going to Vegas, the protesters, everything combined, right? Social distancing starting to lag a little bit. But slowly but surely, starting to see very, very aggressive cases, you know, pop up uh, on a regular basis. And we talked about last week that Wednesday uh, into Thursday session that we saw it happening. Uh, and there was a really aggressive move down. Uh, the Dow was down like 7% uh, for that one day. And the next day, a lot of the beta names followed down. So we started seeing things pop up here. But until you first see it firsthand, I got out of the car. I'm talking about th there's thousands of people on the sidewalk, like everywhere, like literally everywhere. We, we got onto the boardwalk uh, of Sandy Hook and there was literally, th I mean, th you couldn't find an inch of space uh, surrounding by people. And that's all it took me to, you know, I wasn't going to do, I wasn't going to be there anyway. So I was like, you know what, 
I was there for 20 minutes, literally 20 minutes, and I, I was horrified. I, was, I, I went home. Uh, I drove home. So I, I drove around three and a half hours for about 20 minutes. And, but you know what? My kids got it. And before you turn around and say, well, that's crazy, right? That's absolutely nuts. This is just an exaggerated flu. Let me say this much, okay? And I appreciate everybody's opinions. That might be an opinion if you live in a smaller town, right? Not congestedly populated. That's great, okay? I get it, okay? If you live in the tri-state area or any really big metropolitan city, it's very, very quickly to get this thing. Now, before you turn around and say again, and again, you have every right to say, you're exaggerating, this is nonsense, it's the press. Okay, let me say this much. I had two childhood friends in the last two months die of corona, okay? These, these, these are guys in, in their 40s, and I had a third one who survived, but he was on a ventilator for like three weeks, okay? Two of those, you know, two of those families don't have fathers, okay? I have no idea if they had underlining circumstances, if they didn't. But again, my job, again, especially on this Father's Day, is to make sure, you know what, I'm doing whatever I can to protect myself, okay, so I could be there for my children, so my children don't have to grow up without a father. So before you turn around and say, toughen up, live your life, this is my life. My children are my life. And the point for me, for my life going forward, is to making sure their lives are exponentially better than mine was growing up. So the idea that this is just an exaggerated flu, okay, number one, who are you going to take care of my kids when I'm gone, unfortunately, right? So if I get this thing one day, okay, I get this thing one day. I get that, right? I get it. I get the mortality rates are a lot less uh, than, you know, maybe the press is. I get that part, okay? But again, at the end of the day, the question is, who is going to raise your kids, okay, if you're not around? So for all you guys who believe in the whole corona thing is a myth and this, that, the other thing, just always think from the parent point of view, and especially from this Father's Day, right, from this edition of the Father's Day update, I think all the dads in agreement will agree that it's better to be safe than sorry and watch your children grow up than be completely reckless and have kids growing up without their father. Again, the choice is pretty simple. Again, it's all about making adult decisions. So let's talk about the market, right? So if you've noticed what happened the previous week, as soon as we got any type of corona news, market started you know, really getting aggressive to the downside. We're going, again, we saw that 7% move single day in the Dow, followed by the next day beta got pulled up down as well. So pretty aggressive moves. What I noticed about this week, and I usually, this past week, and, and super action last week, really, really super action. But what I noticed about last week was, and again, I usually never talk about the Dow, but this is, you know, this is kind of important. If you look at the Dow, uh, the Dow is up 1% for the week. Now, why is this kind of a big deal here? If you look at what happened, and, I, and again, I pay attention to data. I always pay attention in the afternoon sessions, what potentially could be kind of a big picture. And what I've noticed last week was, and again, you could kind of see it now, uh, for the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So six out of the last eight days, the Dow closed lower than it opened, okay? And again, you can make the case and turn around and say, well, what's the big deal? It's just profit taking. Look at the, look at the market run. It's been an amazing run. It absolutely has been, right? Absolutely amazing run. But when you look at the hard data and you start looking deep into the numbers of this hard data, you'll start seeing some very, very uh, aggressive undertones. And if you look at how the market acts, very, very aggressive session, right? You have very, very aggressive sessions in the mornings. Again, uh, if you are a trader, you're trying to uh, really capture as much alpha as possible from the first three, three and a half hour session. Uh, again, I've been really preaching this for years and years and years, the best way to kind of elongate your career, especially in the beginning when you are trying to build a foundation, trying to get your, your feet planted firmly in this business, uh, you're trying to extend your shelf life. What you're, what you're trying to do is get as much information. If you're, if you're trading in the afternoon, again, it really depletes your ability to kind of elongate your career because, again, all the value is in the morning. And, and, and again, for all you guys who have been trading for such a short period of time, there, you know, you trading in the morning compared to you trading in the afternoon is apples to hand grenades. The afternoon, 
uh, is, 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 is a nightmare, especially if you're trying to uh, create, create alpha uh, when it's not there. The ranges are contracting, uh, more people are tired, it's, a, in a, it's an area that people are positioned for the next day, and there's a better chance that you're going to give back most of your day or all your day in the afternoon than you are in the morning. So kind of a bit of advice, I've been saying this for many, many years, try to avoid the afternoon if you can. The stock that you like, the, the play that you like for, you know, is going to work for 30 to 50, 60 cents in the afternoon, can work for three, four, five, twelve dollars uh, in the morning. Just kind of a bit of advice. But what I, we still, we, we, we really started seeing though in the afternoon is stocks really started gassing out, like really, really gassing out and started to really close at the lows. Even the strongest names back to back to back days that were breaking out with very, very aggressive either uh, upgrades, or whatever the case may be, they started closing at the lows. And let me give you guys um, kind of points and in interest. So um, Apple, right? Apple gets upgraded, you know, upgraded on Friday, right? Stock gap, you know, gaps up very, very aggressive and rolls over. Uh, Facebook, very, very strong move. And again, these are, these are really, really strong pivots we had on Friday. We'll talk about the individual pivots, but I just want to show you the ramifications of my thought process. So, you know, you had Facebook coming out of this whole range, put up a really, really ex exaggerated move, and then, you know, it sells off. You know, it sells off literally uh, $6 off its highs. NVIDIA, the same thing. Big, big pivot on Friday, right? Really, really big pivot on Friday. You know, stock goes from the 372 pivot to 378, and the stock is $10 off its highs. So, the moral of the story is something is wrong, right? Like something is wrong. And now that we are getting more evidence and more aggressive cases of Corona, okay, all these headlines that we were really embracing, right? They don't care, right? This is not the Robin Hood market, the Robin Hood bubble. This is, uh, this is really the bubble of buy anywhere and sell higher, right? Isn't that the real bubble? It's not the Robin Hood effect. It's, it's, the, it's, the prudent, it's the prudent idiot effect. Basically, somebody always dumber will you will come behind and bid up your stock. So the idea that the market will negate bad news over and over and over again going forward is, is a little bit naive. And again, we're trying to get facts. We're trying to get data that, you know what? Maybe this is starting to come to an end. So again, the, the, the easiest way to figure out that the market is kind of trying to stall out or give us signals that, hey, maybe this is slowly but surely going to come to an end, is watching price action on the strongest stocks. And when you see price action on the strongest stocks and they start to fail, that's when, again, macro information, macro uh, environment starts to become important again. Uh, again, another case in point, look at Beyond, right? Really strong pivot on Friday, you know, takes out uh, the 161 area explodes for five dollars and then sells off eight for the rest of the day. And again, it's not like the market got destroyed for a thousand fifteen hundred points. Okay, materialistically, there was nothing there. It's just showing you slowly but surely that macro environment is changing or starting to change. Uh, the news that was negated a week ago, three days ago, a month ago is starting to be a little bit more real. And now that I really saw the first case of what potentially could happen, and everybody talks about the second wave, and you can make an argument, well, when the hell did the first wave go away, okay? But once I saw thousands and thousands of people literally on top of each other, very few had masks, okay? This is when I knew, you know what? This market could be changing. Time to get, again, I don't want to use the word passive, but get a little more smarter, right? Get a little bit more adult-like, maybe go into more uh, preservation mode. Um, I think that's starting to be on the table. And I think if you go into this week and you still believe that you can buy anywhere and sell higher, you might be really, you know, really brought to some really big reality very, very quickly. And I think going into this week, and again, usually I, I would say for the last like, you know, three, four months or so, I'm giving the buyers the benefit of the doubt. Even though I am, I think there's a very, very specific, okay, uh, very, very specific guidelines that I want to play this week. And if you look at the cues on the surface, there's nothing wrong, right? We're, we're literally like a couple of bucks away from the 52-week highs. But the most important part is what I'm seeing on the stronger names ripping up in the morning and then giving it all the way back in the afternoon. That is a warning sign. Now, again, maybe it translates in tomorrow. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe this still extends for another week, a month, a year. We don't know. Again, I'm not, you know, I'm not in the business of predicting what's going to happen next. But I am in the, you know, I am in the, uh, in the, in the, 
in a very, very, uh, you know, very, very strong position of protecting my capital and protecting my mental equity, understanding what potentially could happen next. Obviously, we need confirmation uh, to the downside. So if you look at the groups that are strong and that are weak this week because of this new rise of aggressive, uh, you know, aggressive wave of Corona starting to build back. And it's not even slowly anymore. It's starting to build back uh, pretty aggressively. Again, we have to go back into our mental memory bank. Again, what industries are going to suffer? Okay, all the cruise ships already said that, well, we're going to be on domestic ports until like September 15th. So again, you start looking at the cruise ships, right? Right, look how close, right? You have NCLH, Norwegian Cruise Line, right? A day away from confirming to really, really getting hit. You see CCL, right? Same thing. These are the same charts. You, you could literally... Tr you can literally pick your favorite cruise ship, your favorite airline, right? Look at look at this triple bottom here on rising support. If this whole channel gets confirmed, this CCL will get destroyed. If you look at RCL, the same thing. These are the same charts over and over again. This is massive bottom here, it keeps on holding. If it starts building that bottom, it's gonna get destroyed. Look at this, you know, look at the airlines, okay? Right, look at the airlines. These are exactly the same charts, the charts that kept on holding this rising support and kept on moving back up. Again, you could just draw this imaginary trend line. These are all lower highs on the daily. And what happens when daily support gets met? With confirmations, more sellers and buyers, right? It's not a mystery, stocks will go lower. And you saw that with Boeing, right? You saw that with Boeing on Friday. And again, it didn't take out a macro channel, but it did take out the five day. And again, for all you guys who believe in the five day theory, and again, I've been kind of demonstrating this for years and years and years, you know, you saw this pretty, you know, pretty aggressive pivot on Friday, you know, it goes down two, two and a half dollars in a matter of minutes. Again, is this kind of the preview of what's going to happen this week? Again, maybe, maybe not. But again, our job is not to predict what's going to happen three months from now. Our job is to put ourselves in a position to be ready, right? To be ready if this thing plays out and for us to capitalize on the downside. Now, again, you turn around the flip side. You know, what companies are going to get more strength, more business, okay? Uh, more eyeballs, more attention from the Robin Hood bubble. I'm joking around, um, right? So again, you start looking for the bet, you know, for the biggest benefactors. Again, if you notice the stocks that were strong yesterday, right? They were Netflix, okay? The stay-at-home theme. They were Chewy, correct? They were Chewy. You know, these are some you know really good pivots there. Uh, ZM is you know still one of my favorites. Uh, Amazon. If you look at Amazon again, it traded. It, the only reason it came down, it traded right into the 2700 supply. Uh, you look at Peloton, right? These are all again plays that were benefit from the stay-at-home movement. So you have to start thinking, but you have to start thinking in the most simplistic way. Again, there will be opportunity to the downside. There will be uh, opportunity to the upside. Somebody has to always chase something to the upside, and there's always have to be the ability to shake investors out with fear to the downside. That's your driving force when you're trading long and trading short. So going into this week, it's a pretty, you know, pretty simplistic approach. Uh, sell bias on airlines, casino, and again, you can make it a broad, uh, you can make it a broad case study. Um, I am personally looking at airlines and cruise ships just to kind of narrow it. You don't need to do everything, but again, you can look at leisure, uh, travel stocks, uh, hotels, um, you know, movie, anything, anything to do, restaurant stocks, anything to do that people will not leave their house for again, that's obviously in play. And anything to do with the stay at home movement obviously will be attracted to the natural play uh, to the upside. So that's kind of our game plan uh, for at least for Monday, and we'll see how things uh, play out. But a very, very aggressive week. That was kind of, a, that was kind of our plays. Uh, that was kind of our plays pretty much towards the end of the end of the week. Uh, again, the, 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 the most amazing part what we saw was still the really aggressive strength, especially in the morning. Again, you really don't need to bring your, uh, burn your brain cells uh, to the afternoon just because there's so much value in the morning. And again, this market continues to be really, really good. But again, let's not be naive to think it's going to last forever. And again, it could last you know, past this conversation. So uh, if you look at Friday's pivots, again, just continued strength uh, from the whole week. Uh, these beta stocks are just nuts. The, 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 the stock for, the, for me, my, my biggest 
play throughout the whole week was Roku. Roku is an absolute monster this week. Uh, if you've been watching this video, literally call buying nonstop. You know, 20, 30, 40 dollar out of the call, uh, out of the money. We even saw July 240 calls being traded. And again, the option flow is just kind of a preview of what potentially can happen. And these stocks are a perfect model of you know the order flow. So uh, great week. I thought it was a great week. Uh, I know a lot of you guys did incredibly well, uh, especially on, on these beta names. And let's talk about them. So uh, Netflix, obviously 1021. This is continues to be the big level on Tesla. Obviously never got there. Uh, Netflix is, is poised, man. It really is poised uh, for the week. Uh, this thing triggered late in the day. I was, I was already logged off. Uh, 453 needs to build. But if you look at Netflix, this is, you know, you know, it, it closed, you know, it closed a little bit above that 53 level, but it really is setting up. Uh, it really is setting up for a 52 week high. And if there is any more headlines of, you know, p potential states going back into kind of lockdown, this is going to be, you know, one of the natural plays. So again, look, you know, this is a stone throws away from 52 week highs up a little bit from the close. You still had, we still saw some pretty aggressive uh, call buying the 460s for next week, the 470s, the 480s, the 485s. No, not, excuse me, not 485s, the 465s, uh, 460, 465, 470, 475. So uh, a lot of attention on Netflix. I still really, really like it for uh, next week. Uh, this was huge. Uh, NVIDIA, uh, 372 needs to build, rejected two times. Uh, here is NVIDIA, just a monster move on NVIDIA. So here is the whole channel here. 372, 372, 372. Uh, stock went to almost 378. Uh, big move there on NVIDIA. Uh, BYND continues to be just a monster. Just a, it, start, it really is starting to turn into one of my favorite traders. Just a really great name. Uh, 161 needs to build. Uh, here was BYND, right? Here's the 161, 60 minute, right? 161 was the high here. 161 was the high here. It took out 161. Uh, it went to almost 166. So big move there on beyond. And again, this is how you, you, you know that stocks are stalling out. Like Apple got upgraded on Friday. This could have been, you know, this could have been a monster move. 355.50 was a 52 week high. It needs to build. So if you look at Apple, right? This didn't turn out to be one of these greatest moves uh, because, again, there's something wrong when stocks get stalled out and start going lower. So it takes out the 355.50, uh, goes to 357. And yes, was there cash flow in the stock, a dollar, dollar and a half in the stock? Absolutely. But again, the last thing you want to see if you are continuously talking about the bull case is a stock taking out the 52 week highs and selling off $10 off its highs. Just again, just naturally doesn't make sense. Again, this is kind of my warning signs uh, going into this week. Uh, Roku, not only did 129.30, 129.90, 130 work, we got long off the bottom of the channel here. Um, and again, this is what we do in, in the live webinar. I usually don't put, I usually don't put these uh, stocks into the Twitter feed because again, I like to keep them uh, with natural uh, natural pivots, but here was you know here was the you know here was the, an unbelievable buy here on the on literally on the bottom channel here. If you notice here, this is where we talk about dip buying all the time on 60 minute support. Every single time the stock hits 60 minute support, it explodes. It hits 60 minute support. We got long on the 60 minute support, and not only did this thing go red to green, this thing just exploded to 132. So a, amazing move all week on Roku was great. Uh, again, Facebook. Uh, 238.20 needs to build. And again, here's a perfect example. Great pivot, right? It took out the 238.20, uh, went to 241. Again, right? Went to 241. Fantastic move for Facebook. And again, and it sells off $5 off its, its highs. Again, warning signals. Again, these are we were trying to get the data uh, for next week. Uh, 199 on Boeing. Uh, didn't obviously never never got there, but there was a great pivot on Boeing to the downside. We'll show you that in a second. Uh, so the video was really, really good, and it turned into be a really monster. Roku turned into be a beast. Uh, beyond, you know, again, 163 went to 160, almost to 166. Uh, take on the way up, uh, and again, this is this was uh, this was uh, Roku when, when it broke 130. I said, hey, there's a shot. It gets to 134. It got to like 132 and change, but hey. Just a phenomenal move on Roku is just awesome, really, really awesome. Again, another play on the stay-at-home movement, or again, you know, you never know. There might be uh, some sort of chatter going around. Vaguely, I heard some rumors on Google. Uh, Chewy again, continuing with the theme. Uh, they, look, they're coming for uh, the July 60 calls. It needs to build 49, 50 macro, and here is Chewy. Chewy had a great move on Friday, right? So it took out the 49. 
and it went to uh, 51 and change. Again, stay-at-home stocks, again, that's the theme. Money flow and stay-at-home stocks, money outflow, pretty much everything else. Obviously, uh, the, the whole uh, leisure industry obviously is on, on the chopping block as well. Uh, Facebook, Rocket, yeah, I mean, look, the market's on fire, right? And then the market came in. Um, so great moves, just great moves here. And again, here's another case in point of a stocks uh, trading into rising support. I go, just in case it gets down to 995, that's the five-day moving average, uh, should hold and bounce. Uh, Tesla got down to the 95 area and then bounced to like 101, 102. And obviously, again, on any bounce play, always take on the way up and use break even as you stop. And obviously, you got sold off a little more into the close. Uh, ZM, I still really, really like. Um, you know, Beyond was very, very, you know, very, very aggressive. So, uh, very good move, you know, very good move. I think APT also with flew off the watch list from that uh, 1650 area. I think went to like 17 and change. Um, so really good, you know, really, really aggressive names here. And here was uh, Chewy's on fire. And this is the last pivot of the day. And this is when you know, uh, again, the, the themes are starting to play out here. Uh, Boeing 187 keeps holding support. If it builds below, it can flush. And uh, you know, flushed, right? Here's flushed. Here's the, here's the 87, right? Here's the 87 area, and it went all the way down to like 184 and change, obviously setting up uh, for another continuation bottom move uh, going into Monday. So uh, again, I, I think the key to this market is you have to stay woke, as the kids would say. Uh, stay woke, uh, again, take it one day at a time, one trade at a time. Uh, there is no magic formula. If you know you can't trade with blindfolders on, this is a, a new market, okay? This is an absolute new market that uh, runs on irrational behavior, but again, irrational behavior is the new normal. So uh, going into this week, um, I am starting the week sell bias on pretty much everything, but especially <clears throat> cruise ships, airlines, uh, that whole leisure, uh, leisure entertainment play. Again, I'm going to focus on uh, the cruise ships and the airlines obviously expands the whole market. And obviously, if there's more COVID news, we want to pay attention, continue to pay attention uh, to the COVID uh, stay at home uh, name. So uh, great job last week. The market's been incredible. But again, one day at a time, one trade at a time. Again, I want to thank uh, all the fathers for being great human beings, molding their children uh, into the next uh, leadership role of this universe, not even this country, just this universe. Uh, and the most important thing is continue to be uh, a positive role model for your children. Guys, stay blessed. Have a great Father's Day and God's help. We'll see you all tomorrow. Take care. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.